I've been trying to figure out how to make this video not a boring DIY tutorial, so if you're after that, I'll link some down below, which are great. There's a time and place for them, but hopefully what you get from today is more of an entertainment plus DIY tip vid. So firstly, you'll learn what acoustic panels are, why you would want them as a consumer for listening to music or movies, or as a creator for playing instruments or right now recording in a homemade studio. Number two, we're gonna build some acoustic panels and you wanna get information that's transferable hopefully to anywhere in the world. See, materials that we're going to use won't be available in every country to the exact same specifications that I use today here in Australia. So I'm gonna give you stuff that's more so handy for you for not only acoustic panels, but other DIY projects that you embark on. And finally, third, you're gonna see an astonishing before and after. We're gonna do some recordings here in this room pre-treatment, and then you're gonna also hear what it's like after, which, well, you kind of already can. Hopefully my spare bedroom in our house sounds pretty good right now. If that sounds good to you, then let's get into it. G'day, I'm Cam, and if you're new here, welcome. This video is a final episode in a mini-series I started called Studio 2020. In episode one, we 3D modeled the acoustic panels we're building today, as well as showed you how to 3D model by planning out my three by three meter home YouTube studio space. We then built a custom cable management solution for my desk, and I showed you how to use an iPad for a dual monitor setup with Windows 10. Thanks to Rode, I also unboxed more microphones than you could sing Crazy Frog into. Look out at the end of this video for a playlist containing all of those videos, as well as click subscribe down below to not miss out on any future project plans. Now, let's have a look at what the reverb in this space used to sound like. G'day guys, welcome back to the channel, and if you're new here, my name's Cam, and I make tech videos every week. Now, as you would have seen in the title or thumbnail, that sounds pretty bad. Let's fix it. With everything that we talk about today, it can be transferable between a consumer or a creator. So whether you're trying to record audio to a microphone or listen to playback from speakers, sound is always being sent and received. And it's this middle ground that we're trying to tackle. That's why listening to speakers in an empty town hall would sound horrible, and probably why you think you sound good singing in the shower. This is because of hard surfaces causing reverb, and that's what we're trying to stop today. To help visualize this, we use this laser machine. Picture every little dot as sound, either traveling from a mouth towards a microphone or a speaker towards your ears. Every dot that lands on my ears is good. And every dot that lands on the wall, well, that could cause trouble. In this case, we've got a harsh, hard surfaced wall. This is our first reflection point. To help visualize reflections, we're gonna use a mirror. Now, any dots that appear on the wall from the mirror, I'll just step out of the way, these guys are now on a second reflection point. And from there, they could bounce again and make their way around the room back to where the listener was. This creates the reverb in the space and makes that echoey noise like you probably can hear right now. To combat this, the point of the acoustic panel is to block it. So if you put a panel up on the wall that's made of a dense, you know, sound absorbing material, it's gonna stop that reflection from occurring at the second point. From becoming a master in the topic from watching a couple of YouTube videos, I learned the following. DIY acoustic panels usually consist of the following four materials. Number one, wood. I chose wood, fine to be specific. This allows me to create a sturdy, sharp edge frame that will stand the test of time. Number two, home insulation, preferably the soundproofing variety. This is designed to absorb sound from passing between rooms in a home. Number three, breathable fabric. Speaker grill and Hessian are great budget choices and professional DIY acoustic fabric will make you think will this project even work at all. I chose this soft felt fabric from Spotlight. It was cheap by the meter and had breathable characteristics. It also had great aesthetics to enhance the look of the studio. And finally four, some fasteners, screws and a staple gun to bind it all together. Remember, to complete DIY projects, you either need to have the tools or borrow them. And if you can't do either, you need to factor the cost into your overall budget. The tools that I use to complete the job are the following. I use some PPE, so you've got your mask, goggles, and your earmuffs. 
We've got a circular saw and drill as well as some measuring tapes, squares, straight edge and clamp. Now to fasten everything in we're going to use some screws and staples and pre-drill with some drill bits. Now all of this stuff will be linked in the description below. The next up is to create the frame. We need to cut two tops, have two sides, one middle brace and one mount. Next up, we're gonna drill the frame together. So pretty much take a measurement of the thickness of your wood and then just half that. And that is how far in from the tip of your wood that you wanna to come to ensure that it goes into the center of the receiving piece of wood. Now, depending on the wood that you've chose, it's a good idea to drill pilot holes to avoid splitting of your wood. And once you've done them, then you can screw in your screws. Now, as for screws, it's a good rule of thumb to have two thirds in the receiving piece of wood. So let's say our wood is 10 mil thick. That means you want 20 mil in the receiving piece of wood that means you've got a 30 mil screw that ensures you've got enough bite inside the piece of wood that's not going to be pulled out with our frame created we can then cut our fabric down to size and lay this down on the table with our fabric and frame we can then put some insulation in Now for the rear of the panel, I've got some frost guard here. It's bright green and it's very thin and breathable, intended to throw over plants. I just cut this up, no one's gonna see it and it's just gonna help hold that insulation in place. Now before we secure it, we're gonna put in the rear support and the rear mount. Now the rear mount is actually just a piece of wood that's been cut at a 45 degree angle, creating like a monkey grip style method, which you'll see when we mount it later on the walls. Now this is where our staple gun comes in handy. We're able to staple in that rear fabric. Now we've got a 20 mil gap here. Now this is important because this allows sound that's already passed through the sound panel to actually get caught and kind of bounce around in this space. With the rear fabric secured, we then staple in the front. Make sure that you pull tight because you don't want any saggy fabric on front of the panel. Once I've pulled and secured the sides and the tops, it's time to fold the corners and then stapling it in place. Corners suck. Seriously, the hardest thing to get a straight answer for on the internet is base traps. Or well, what people think will actually be a highly functional base trap. See, think of high frequency sound and mid sound as this basketball. It uh, bounces off of hard walls and surfaces like myself. This bounces around the room and easily can be absorbed by absorption panels. However, Think of base as this brick. It's big, it's heavy, and if I threw this at the wall, it probably would shake it as it goes through it into the next room. The definition of that is base shaking. You know what the feeling. You understand that base moves completely differently to high frequency sounds. So controlling it is a different ball game. Usually you see these big wedges or foam triangles that you can stick in a corner. However, after looking at a lot of things, they kind of became more complicated. And I just decided for my project to just stick a thin panel in the corner. Remember, you do need to decide between form and function. And whilst this room is a recording area for the level of production that I'm doing, I feel like this is gonna be completely fine. Now I might be a little bit biased, but I reckon these panels are looking great. So now it's time to mount them on the walls. Now, to ensure they're in line with the top of the window frame all around the room, I'm gonna use a laser leveler. And then I'm gonna grab a stud finder to ensure that we're drilling at least one screw into the wood frame of the house, which will be able to bear the weight of the panels. With a simple lift up and on, our panels are secured in place. Now I'm just gonna repeat the same steps for the remaining panels.
For the type of spots behind doors, I couldn't fit a full panel, so I stuck up some acoustic pinboard. This is a great cheap option that adds acoustic benefits and functionality to the space. For the cupboard door, I bent a maker bracket to make a hook, covered it in black electrical tape to protect it from scratching, and then drew it into the top of the door. And with the gap, the door can still close easily. Now for the mini corner panels we talked about, I attached chains and then hooked them up to adjustable tensioners. This allowed easy hanging and fine height adjustment for a perfect flush fitment. I put two white panels on an angle directly opposite the blue wall and used the same chain and tensioner combo. And with this, we're done. So I know what you wanna know, was it all worth it? Well, I created a little test that I could perform before and after the acoustic panels. To start off with, we have a constant variable and that is a audio recording to be played over this Logitech UE Wonderboom speaker. A kick and a snare. These two sound samples are able to be repeated through this speaker at the exact same placement in the room at the same volume. This is gonna be recorded by this shotgun microphone, the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus, set on the camera at the exact same distance from the speaker in the same room before and after acoustic treatment. So let's cut to Cam about six months ago with the before. Now welcome back to Past Cam in the non-treated room. I'm gonna give you three samples. I'm gonna play a recorded kick, a recorded snare, both are very EDM and punchy-like, and the third one will be a physical clap. Okay, so you heard the clean samples and then it being played in the space. So now it comes for after treatment. Now I'm not gonna say what I think just yet, I'm just now gonna show you back to back the before and the after. Honestly, I didn't think it was gonna be that good. I finished putting up the panels and I started recording more YouTube videos, but listening to the beforehand and my previous recordings, this is a much better setup and I'm incredibly happy with the results of this DIY project. Now for more detailed analysis of the before and after, we've got the clean waveform of the sample and then before and after treatment. This will allow you to see the kick and how much repeating or reverb was after that, the sound left in the space, and then the snare. So this allows you to actually see instead of trying to hear the proof hard fact difference from the microphone of before and after panels. It's uh, pretty amazing. So how much did it all cost? Well, in the end we end up with nine acoustic panels, 10 if you count the two mini ones in the corners. All the materials and specific quantity amounts are linked in the description down below. And also labor obviously is not included in this price. So it will take you hours to complete this project, but this is the final total amount. The wood for the frame and supports came to $214. The insulation, which was of the acoustic variety, was 59 bucks. Fabric for the front and rear of the panels was about $100. And fasteners for screws, brackets, and chains was about $50 worth. This brings the total project to $423 for nine panels, which if you're quick with maths, you know means $47 per panel, which is ridiculous. You could expect to pay five, 10, 20 times the price for one retail acoustic panel. And we did it for $47 each with great results. 
Now where to from here? Well, this room is good to go. I'm able to record YouTube videos as a creator, but as a consumer, well, my home theater is in dire need of acoustic treatment. It's got three big bare walls and well, here's a clap test in there. Yeah, it's actually worse than here. So that is going to get some acoustic panels created. However, I'm going to add a twist. So make sure you click subscribe down below to find out what I'm doing in that room to spice it up and make it a little bit more home theatery uh, in the future series. If today's video helped you, make sure you give it a thumbs up down below and drop a comment if they've got a question or you just found out something new. I'd love to see you around here again next week.